Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're dealing with a few issues that keep popping up age after age through reflection and examination of the scriptures. This time, what does the Bible say about criminal justice? Criminal justice is the system of handling those who've been charged with criminal offenses according to the law, and just as laws are different in different places, the precise way that the justice system plays out will differ from place to place. However, the laws of God are universal. Everyone should obey them first, regardless of what other loyalties they have. So, what should people be doing in matters of criminal justice? Thou shalt not do that which is unjust, nor judge unjustly. Respect not the person of the poor, nor honor the countenance of the mighty, but judge thy neighbor according to justice. Leviticus 19.15 Everything else the Bible has to say about justice in society can be nicely summarized by these words. When judgment has to be passed, don't concern yourself with whether a rich person can reward you if you rule in their favor, and don't try to win points with your friends by ruling in favor of a poor person just because they seem like a victim. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Judge ye true judgment, and shew ye mercy and compassion every man to his brother. Zechariah 7, 9 Instead, focus on the truth and the evidence. Give a ruling based on what the truth is, so that real justice can be had. That's more important than all of these other considerations. All other things being equal, we should try to be merciful, whether by protecting someone who's been falsely accused, or by ruling against a genuinely guilty person to protect everyone else. The soul that sinneth, the same shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, and the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. Ezekiel 18.20a when someone commits a crime, their relatives are not implicated in that crime and shouldn't be punished for what their relative did. This is generally understood nowadays, but had to be spelled out in ancient times. Whosoever shall shed man's blood, his blood shall be shed, for man was made to the image of God. Genesis 9, 6 There are punishments which are proper for certain crimes, and different crimes carry different punishments based on the severity of the crime. Crimes against other people are severe because people are made in the image of God, so the punishment for those crimes should be carried out. But when should it be carried out? For because sentence is not speedily pronounced against the evil, the children of men commit evils without any fear. Ecclesiastes 8.11 Sentencing and punishment should be done quickly in order to discourage future crimes by other criminals. Learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge for the fatherless, defend the widow. Isaiah 1.17 Although we shouldn't automatically side with a poor or unfortunate person unless they actually are in the right, we should still recognize that widows, fatherless children, and oppressed people of all kinds do often have it rough, and while that doesn't excuse evil actions, it does make it important to look for ways to help these people if we can in any just way possible. However, it's important to keep in mind that this only applies to legal proceedings. Revenge not yourselves, my dearly beloved, but give place unto wrath, for it is written, Revenge is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Romans 12.19 If someone commits some wrong against me personally, it's not my job to take it upon myself to punish them. It's just as well, since I'd probably be pretty bad at figuring out how much punishment is the right amount. God, however, knows exactly how much is right. This verse is often misunderstood because it doesn't mean that God wants to keep us from getting revenge, much the reverse. The phrase, give place unto wrath, should be taken to mean, let God do his part. If we try to take revenge on our enemies, we're bound to screw it up and end up doing something unjust ourselves, putting ourselves in a bad relationship to God. If God takes charge of the revenge, he will not screw it up, because he's perfect and his revenge on our behalf will be a perfect revenge, which will do no harm to us or our relationship with him. For I am the Lord that love judgment and hate robbery in a holocaust. Isaiah 61, 8a. God is eager for the final judgment, and we should be too, but only if we choose to be just and merciful so that the final judgment isn't dangerous to us. So if we ever have the task of doing anything in a court or in any other situation related to criminal justice, our decision should be based only on authentic truth and justice, no other factors. 
This draws us closer to being like God, whose judgments will be the most true, the most perfect, and the most just. Next, what does the Bible have to say about freedom? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.